Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about the difference between sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and myofibrillar hypertrophy. And we're gonna talk about specific training variables and some myths that are surrounding this topic. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so to lay the groundwork, muscle is composed of about 70% myofibrillar proteins, 20% sarcoplasmic proteins, and 10% mitochondrial proteins. Theoretically, I can shift this ratio. So I'm just using that 70% to 20% as a pretty rough estimate for the average population. But let's just say that theoretically, I can increase the sarcoplasmic proteins a little bit more than I can increase the myofibrillar proteins based on training decisions. Okay, so now knowing some numbers as a baseline, let's move into the theory a little bit and actually discuss what's going on here. So we know that bodybuilders produce less force with the same cross-sectional area of muscle than powerlifters do. This is actually really well documented in research and we can see that bodybuilders produce about two thirds the amount of force as a powerlifter at the same size. So at this point you may be thinking, okay, well then the powerlifter obviously has more myofibrillar proteins because those are our contractile proteins. Those are the actin and myosin that are actually producing the force whereas the sarcoplasmic proteins are expanding cell volume without necessarily increased force production. That's the theory. But here's one missing piece, and that is the neuromuscular adaptation. So we know that powerlifters train with very heavy loads and with high force activities. So on the force velocity curve, they're very far up at the top on the force end in terms of their training. So this really does need to be considered when we're looking at the difference in force output of bodybuilders and powerlifters. And based on my research, this is actually the more significant role is the neuromuscular adaptation than the difference in myofibrillar versus sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Now both of these should work in combination, meaning that if a bodybuilder is specifically concerned about size, they're not gonna necessarily do high force training and they're not necessarily gonna be worried about maximal loads on the bar, rather they're gonna be thinking about volume and the potentially higher testosterone response from higher volume training and things like that. Whereas a power lifter who's most concerned about their Wilkes or their weight to strength ratio, they need to actually be maximizing strength in force output at a minimal body weight. So that power lifter is gonna make strategic decisions in training to maximize force output for those neuromuscular adaptations and potentially get a little bit more myofibrillar hypertrophy from that type of training as well. So I don't think that these are necessarily independent and you could focus on one or the other, but it kind of goes hand in hand that when you're doing that high force training, you are also doing the type of training that may stimulate a little bit more on the myofibrillar hypertrophy side. Thinking back to the bodybuilder, we also have to consider the energy system and bodybuilders using that eight, 10, 12, 15 reps range are gonna be typically using a little bit more of that anaerobic glycolysis pathway. They're gonna be causing more local metabolic acidosis, potentially relying a little bit more on the cardiovascular pathways, the capillaries into the muscle and needing more of those sarcoplasmic and mitochondrial protein to be building and increasing in order to actually facilitate the type of training they're doing. So doing that type of training, they actually may be prioritizing that 30%, that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and mitochondrial protein growth just by the type of training that they're doing. So because of the relationship between anaerobic metabolism and sarcoplasmic proteins, there probably is some preferential sarcoplasmic hypertrophy for that higher rep bodybuilder saw training. To what extent, we really don't know, and there needs to probably be more research to actually clarify the extent to which those sarcoplasmic versus myofibrillar hypertrophies can be prioritized, but that probably does occur to some extent. It's not the entire mechanism that is causing the difference between bodybuilders and powerlifters in terms of force output. A lot of that is neurophysiological in the actual strength of the neurons, the motor neurons that are going from the brain down to the muscles. But in combination, those two things are in fact resulting in that difference in the force output of a bodybuilder being about two thirds the force output of an equally sized power lifter. All right guys, so that's the science. I hope that helps you understand and make training decisions. If this has been helpful for you, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe for more videos like this. I'll definitely be doing follow-ups as more research comes out. And I will link some articles in the description of this video for you to read more about. Thanks guys, and we'll catch you in the next one.